If someone rings the doorbell and you immediately go and open the door, did any one of you had the question that how was I able to open the door? Of course, it is due to our hands, but definitely, what's the mechanism behind it? It's all due to brachial plexus. So starting it with brachial plexus. You may have got the superficial idea about the function of the brachial plexus. Its main function is to provide motor as well as sensory innovation to all the muscles of the upper limb. Also, it is located around the side of the neck. The brachial plexus comprises of roots, trunks, divisions and cords. You may have got the question that why I have written spinal nerves, but we will see that later. Before that, how to remember all the compartments of brachial plexus in order? We will imagine a story that in general, a tiger is running with rows in his mouth in order to propose the tigress. But the envious guy just applied a shot of direct current to the tiger so that there is no tiger and no rose, which means the tigress is his now. But don't worry, the story is completed here. And you may have found that we had got the mnemonic for learning the order of brachial plexus. That is R, T, B, C, where R stands for rose, T stands for tiger, D stands for direct and C stands for current. So, going on to spinal nerves. Spinal nerves, they arises from different vertebras and forms the roots of the brachial plexus. More specifically, there are total five spinal nerves which leads to formation of brachial plexus, which are C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1, which means last four cranial nerve and first thoracic nerve. That five spinal nerves leads to formation of five roots. That five roots, before getting converted into trunks, give two branches. More specifically, the C5 roots give one branch to rhomboids muscle. That rhomboid muscle is situated on the posterior side of the scapula. Therefore, we can remember it by nerve to rhomboids or dorsal scapular nerve. Here dorsal means posterior and the second nerve will be from C5 to C7 that is nerve to serratus anterior. Hence we have seen spinal nerves and roots. Coming on to trunks, you can see that we only have three trunks. Therefore five roots give origin to three trunks which are upper, middle and lower. The upper trunk arises from C5 and C6 root. The middle trunk arises only from C7 root, whereas lower trunk arises from C8 and T1 roots. Similarly like roots, the trunks will also give some of the branches, out of which upper trunk will give two branches, which are suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius or subclavian nerve. After trunks, there come divisions. There are total six divisions which arises from three trunks, which means each trunk gives origin to one anterior and one posterior division. So we have three anterior division and three posterior division. The divisions are marked in the figure, out of which you can see three posterior division pointed in a single letter that is P and adjacent to it there lies two anterior division. One anterior division is not seen because it lies just anterior to all those three posterior divisions. The divisions don't give any of the branches. After divisions, the chords are formed. Chords and its branches are the most important part of the brachial plexus. There are total three chords. The first chord is the medial chord. Medial chord arises from anterior division of lower trunk, which means C8 and T1 spinal nerves form two roots. C8 and T1 roots combine to form lower trunk 
and lower trunk give origin to one anterior and posterior division out of which the anterior division give origin to medial cord the medial cord give five branches which can be learned with the help of mnemonic m for u where m stands for medial pectoral nerve another m stands for medial cutaneous nerve of arm if we will have the cutaneous supply to arm then why not to forearm therefore the third branch is the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm fourth branch is the medial root of median nerve and fifth branch is the ulnar nerve as the medial cord arises from the lower trunk therefore its root value will be c8 and t1 but ulnar nerve will receive communicating branch from c7 spinal nerve hence its root value will be c7 c8 and t1 the next cord is the lateral cord lateral cord arises from the anterior division of both the upper and middle trunk obviously lower trunk anterior division forms medial cord therefore upper and middle trunks anterior division combine and give origin to lateral cord same like medial cord lateral cord also give branches but they give only three branches ml square is a mnemonic to learn its branches where m stands for musculocutaneous nerve L stands for lateral pectoral nerve. Yeah, you are thinking right. Medial cord will give origin to medial pectoral nerve. And another L has lateral root of medial nerve. Therefore, the lateral root of medial nerve arising from the lateral cord and medial root of medial nerve arising from medial cord. Both this root combine and give origin to medial nerve. The root values of all the branches of lateral cord is C5, C6 and C7. The third and the last cord is the posterior cord. And all the posterior divisions are only left to form the cord. Therefore, posterior cord arises from the posterior division of all the three trunks, which means upper, middle and lower trunks give origin to each posterior division and that three posterior division combines and form the posterior cord. The posterior cord same like medial cord will give five branches but the mnemonic for it is ulnar. Remember one thing that ulnar nerve is derived from medial cord. Posterior cord will not give ulnar nerve. The branches are upper subscapular nerve. If we will have upper, then why not lower? So the second branch will be lower subscapular nerve. Third one will be nerve to latissimus dorsi. Nerve to latissimus dorsi is the nerve which supply the back, that is muscle of the back, that is latissimus dorsi. In order to remember all the muscles very quickly of the upper limb, I have sent a link in the description box. You can click there and go for a quick revision. Coming on to branches, the fourth branch will be axillary nerve and the fifth branch will be radial nerve. Note one thing that nerve to latissimus dorsi is also known as thoracodorsal nerve. The root values of posterior cord are mostly C5 and C6. But remember one thing that radial nerve is the only nerve among the posterior cord as well as from the whole nerves of the brachial plexus which have every root value which means that C5 to C8 and T1 spinal nerves together combine and give origin to radial nerve. Revising quickly the chords again, there are total three chords out of which medial and posterior chord will give five branches, lateral chord will give three branches. Medial chords mnemonic is M4U where U stands for unlan nerve, lateral chord mnemonic is ML squared. Remember that medial and lateral cord will together combine and give origin to medial nerve. Posterior cord has five branches and its mnemonic is ulnar where R stands for radial nerve. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and also comment down your topics on which you want the video. Thank you.